Hey everybody. A shear bolt on one of my implements here. I can't tell you which because that's part of the Everything Changes series and I have to keep some kind of surprise going. Just broke off for the second time. I just went through two shear bolts in less than 15 minutes. So why don't we take this time to take a deep breath, count to 10, and go over a little Q&A. So here's some questions that's been left on a, a couple different videos. Uh, first off, a general question, it's been on uh, several different videos, is what's the song that I keep using? Uh, to get to the point, the song is titled, Where I Am From. I am terrible with names and I apologize to the artist, but it's uh, Tom Fermore and Alex Alina. I apologize for butchering names, I'm terrible with them. It's one of the songs that are uh, included in YouTube as free to use for video creators. So I use it a lot because I like it. It sounds very country and farmy to me. Uh, and it is also something I can use on the videos without having to be charged royalties or have them make claims against my videos for using their music. So kudos uh, for them for allowing YouTube to use their music. And uh, that's why you guys keep hearing it. Uh, any music that you hear either comes from the free library provided by YouTube or there is one song that I have paid for to have uh, the rights to use it commercially uh, but I did not think ahead of time to, to bring that up but uh, it's a bluegrass something or another uh, I think it's called bluegrass interlude um, but I'll have to get you the, the artist another time alright so moving on uh, in the video do potato towers work uh, a user asked, hey there, I've some Muscovy ducklings. Uh, I gave them a mixture of grinded cracked corn and wheat, but they don't seem to be interested in it. How do I get them to eat it? Uh, all they have to eat now is tomatoes, onions, and zucchini. Let them eat the tomatoes, onions, and zucchini. Uh, if you don't want them eating that, if that's your uh, kitchen vegetable garden, and they won't eat cracked corn and wheat, beats the heck out of me. When we have to supplement, we get uh, the feed just down. There's a local company here called Planter Supply. I go over there and I get the 16% uh, layer pellet for our ones that have been feathered out and, and that's what we feed them. Um, I, I'm not sure what to suggest for you. The best thing that I've learned, a lesson we've been learning uh, about our Muscovy ducks is they're terrible uh, pasture foragers. They'll do it uh, but it doesn't really build them out. They need uh, a, a body of water to be able to get their beaks down into the mud and search for things. That seems to be their preference, just from observation, on uh, where they would like to try to find food. So uh, I don't have a suggestion for you on how to make them eat that food. Um, be happy that they're they're eating the other stuff, unless that's what you want. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have an answer for you on that one. Uh, also, over on Do Potato Towers Work, a lot of people had comments about uh, my, my little tangent about Jennifer's migraines. And folks, y'all taught me a lesson about myself and learning to take things with a little more stride. Um, I've never talked to you guys, I don't believe, about uh, our personal lives uh, to that level before. And when I kept reading the comments and people suggesting everything in the world uh, from trying mint to going back to doctors and seeing specialists and having more tests done, uh, I got irritated at first. I really did. Um, you don't know better. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I, don't, I mean, that sounded pretty rude just saying it right there. But uh, you don't know any more than what I've told you. And the fact of the matter is, uh, it's been years worth of going to see multiple specialists, hours from here, medicines to the point where it got us concerned on what it was doing to the rest of her organs, like her liver. Uh, I can't tell you uh, just how many friends I've had that had complications due to the number of medicines that doctors kept putting through them. And you're still not even really getting the top of the iceberg. You're getting like a flake of ice at the very tip of the iceberg. That, that's it. And there's so much more information behind it. Um, I know most of you had nothing but good intentions because you didn't know whether or not this was a brand new thing or if we've just been suffering with it or, or if we had tried a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and you have no way of knowing whether or not your unique idea 
was something we had heard of uh, or if it was something brand new to us. So I apologize and I know I didn't even have to make this comment, you would have never known, but I got frustrated at many of you because I was sitting there thinking what nerve these people have to think that I don't care enough for my wife that I haven't tried everything under the sun to this point. Um, so I apologize for that and I hope you don't hold it against me. All right, on Everything Changes, part one, uh, Mars Rover said, what did you come across on your vacation? Something you see at the Amish village trigger an idea? I'm fascinated and yet slightly worried, laugh out loud. This could go either way. I'm guessing something about soil amending, maybe biochar or increasing your production with a greenhouse. Mars, I'm gonna give you guys one tip, or not a tip, a hint, something. It's not a greenhouse. That's all I got for you, just stay tuned. All right, over on the late summer homestead update, uh, Patty Mincher asked, how are the pigs? Uh, the pigs are doing really good. I'll overlay some video here. We just moved them out of one area that we had them to another area, and they're just fattening up on all the forage that's inside of there. Uh, we had a problem trying to get the pigs around in the, in the pasture system, if you will. Uh, there are just too many little nooks and crannies uh, in, the, in the soil, too many uh, little ups and downs in the soil. And despite our best efforts, the pigs just kept getting out and it was really infuriating. So we decided to skip that idea for now and just put them in a set penned area where we can stake down the netting all over the place and make them stay inside of it. So far, that works most of the time, so long as uh, uh, one of our children doesn't forget to turn the electric fence back on. Uh, I'm not sure where the idea ever came up that once a pig sees an electric fence, they'll never cross that line. Uh, maybe that happens for most people. Ours will sit there and I, I, I honestly, honestly believe maybe somebody's done a study that animals of many different species have the ability to sense electric fences. I, I just imagine it's the field uh, going through the line. Uh, maybe they can hear the buzz. I have no idea. Uh, but you can sit there and watch an animal study the electric fence and decide whether or not it's worth risking it. Uh, and then we had a pig get out and we put him back in, turned the fence back on, and sat there and for the like 10 15 minutes put his snout two three inches away and was just sniffing and observing and then finally after about 15 minutes decided you know i'm going to give it a try anyway and got zapped and that was that uh for a little while anyway we'll see if he tries to get out again but um, that's how the pigs are doing the male has started to uh, mount the females uh, but we don't know if anything has been successful. I uh, expected him to be another month or two before he uh, got up to that size. He is still uh, significantly smaller than them, and because of that, he doesn't really reach. Uh, but interestingly, I don't know how many people have seen this happen. It seemed to me, you know, usually when you watch animals and they start to mate, if the female wants nothing to do with it, the male's not going to be successful. Uh, but if the female's ready for it, she's uh, going to oblige uh, real simply. Well, the female was standing there and perfectly letting the poor little pig try to do everything he could and, and was just climbing all over the backside of her and not getting anything done. And she just laid down on her side right where she was and then he began thrusting. And we don't know if that was a successful situation. Uh, we couldn't see from where we were whether or not he was actually uh, just following instinct or if he was actually being successful. So time will tell. Stay tuned, we'll try to do a, a focus on the pigs another time. Let's see, over on three bag easy automatic chicken feeder, a new YouTuber, new YouTube user asked, how do you secure your feeder at night to keep rodents out? We don't. Don't have a problem with them. Uh, we've got a yard cat that goes around and takes care of rodents. We've got two livestock guardian dogs making noise around the property. We've got all these ducks and chickens going around the property. 
we don't have a problem with rodents getting into that feeder. Uh, I have seen a mouse or two inside of our shed, uh, but I've never seen them getting anywhere near that feeder. So the, the short answer is we don't. We don't have a problem with it. If you're having a rodent problem, uh, look into one of the little bucket spinner traps. I don't even know what a good proper term for it is. It's just a, a bucket with a rod going through it and something in the middle that can spin. You coat it with something like peanut butter and the mouse gets in there, spins, lands in the bucket. Give them something easier to get to, trap them, dispose of them by a yard cat. That's, that's the best I've got for you. So there you have it. I hope you've calmed down like I have. I'm ready to give the tractor another try. It's so frustrating. I already went to town this morning to buy a bigger wrench. Uh, I didn't include it in the Q&A, but some people had commented back on some of the other tractor videos. They saw me using a pipe wrench to adjust some things, and uh, they just had to give me a hard time about it. Well, I had to adjust something that the pipe wrench would not reach to, and so I went out in town, bought a proper crescent wrench, came back, made my adjustment, was happy with my adjustment, uh, went to go using the implement and sheared off a bolt. Went and found another bolt in the shed and sheared that one off, which that second bolt was just a, a spare bolt. Who knows what it was rated at. It was probably off of an old piece of furniture or some nonsense and had no business going on the back side of a tractor. Uh, but now I don't want to drive another 20 miles back into town just to go buy a pack of shear bolts at Tractor Supply. So maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh, hey, thanks for sticking around. One last thing. If you noticed a change in the audio, will you let me know? I decided to upgrade my audio system, and I'm hoping that it will provide you guys with more consistent audio. I hope we'll get rid of the cracks and uh, scratches and pops that were happening uh, with the previous wireless mic and uh, I've upgraded to uh, a much more professional model and I hope that it makes the difference that I'm looking for. I know this, it has a lot more buttons and features and goofy things that took me a whole day to try to figure out. So if, it, if there's a noticeable difference, please let me know. If there's something about the audio that is annoying or troubling, let me know so I can try to figure out a way to adjust it. Thanks again, see you next time.